Okay, I'm Jennifer Podemski. I am director producer of Future History. The future history journey has, has been a long one. It was about three years ago when I was introduced to Chris Nargang. And originally, um, we were brought together to sort of conceive of, of a possible story that had to do with archaeology. And over time, as we were writing the show and I was kind of trying to imagine what a show might look like. I found it interesting that he was an archaeologist who was sort of trying to dig up his identity. Out of this idea was born a much bigger idea that included Serain and this kind of exploration of the identity conversation as the doorway into this much deeper conversation of, okay, once you understand who you are, or once you've come to terms with who you are, or once you accept who you are, what sort of lies underneath that? And for me, what was interesting was what lies beneath that is endless potential to access Indigenous knowledge. And as that idea evolved, I found it to be a really interesting allegory for the physical work that Chris does as an archaeologist, digging in deep into his spirit and his psyche and asking himself some of those harder questions about what it means to be Indigenous. And if you're lucky enough to find the answer, what do you do with it? The title Future History came to me because it was almost like this idea that the, the, the seeds we are planting today blossom into something that is fruitful into the future. Playing with this, with this age gap between the hosts with Serene and Chris, and his life obsession is about history. It's about I mean, what's in the ground, it's about archaeology, it's about something that happened in the past, and Serene is very much focused on on the future and I love that kind of polarity and what those different opinions brought to this uh, identity conversation, the reclamation conversation, the conversation around um, Indigenous knowledge. The fundamental things that come out of experience that would typically be put in like a rule book of some sort are not really taught in school when it comes to all of the experience that Indigenous people had here where we all live for thousands and thousands of years. The harshest reality is that this knowledge is really accessible when you speak an Indigenous language because that sort of is the doorway or the entry point to a whole new worldview. The democracy that we exist within was modeled after the Six Nations Confederacy. We're in a situation today where maybe if we return to that Indigenous knowledge, we will find uh, balance again. Working with Chris and Serene was an incredible experience because, you know, they really are so very different as people. And I was just lucky to work with two people who were really open and trusting when it came to, you know, following direction. The show kind of took on a life of its own and up until now, till the, you know, the final stages, we're still tweaking and changing and shifting and, you know, it's become something almost completely different than we originally imagined. I think the biggest change that happened was that we kind of were like within a six hour radius. <laughs> from you know, location to location. But what I did learn from that experience was that you don't have to go very far from home to find you know, the most rich content. So I was happy that the original vision of traveling all over the place was reimagined to be more local because I now feel so much more inspired about what I'm going to be leaving my children um, because of what I've seen in my own backyard. I have so many ideas in moving forward. 
I think that these conversations about identity and searching for our true self and our own Indigenous knowledge, I think all of those stories are only going to continue to become more important and take more of a front seat in everything from politics to you know what we see on, on television. One of the words that I was coming across a lot at the very beginning stages of this show, and it related so much to archaeology, was this idea of repatriation. To me, it's obviously very patriarchal and was kind of, for me, the, the antithesis of what the soul and spirit and guts of this show is, which is we're looking at reclamation of Indigenous knowledge and harnessing Indigenous knowledge, the experience of Indigenous knowledge, the essence of Indigenous knowledge is, to me, it, it feels feminine. When I started to research it and start to understand more, this was, this was a word that was created by someone. Structures of families and communities were sort of rooted and grounded by the women. And if we are to work to bring back and reclaim Indigenous knowledge and reintegrate it into our daily life, the act of that is kind of re-empowering the matriarchs and the women. My, you know, life turning into an adult and, you know, finding my voice and having my own career and finding myself has been a journey back to the truth. And my truth is that I'm okay with who I am. I have a Jewish father, I have a native Anishinaabe mother from Saskatchewan. I have a residential school legacy on my mother's side. I have a Holocaust legacy on my father's side. I, at 45 years old, can finally say I'm okay with who I am after spending many, many years justifying and proving and feeling ashamed or feeling not worthy. I'm pretty disheartened personally to witness on social media to a lot of identity policing. And I, I understand it, I do. Because there are people who outright, you know, represent our communities who have absolutely no right doing that so that they can benefit from, you know, let's say funding or, you know, accolades or whatever it is. But I do absolutely support people who are on a journey of seeking their truth. Everyone has to step back and reevaluate the way they address the identity conversation because a lot of it is really mean-spirited. Everybody has the right to seek out their own truth and sometimes that truth is, you know, truth of who you are and where you come from. And you know what? If, if that person will never find their community because it's been lost somewhere along the way, then we as Indigenous people in the community around them have to claim them. That's our responsibility. Mm -hmm.